Hey everyone, my name is Nick. I'm a staff engineer at Network, and today I'm gonna to talk about how we're building a live stream shopping app with React Native. So uh, before we get into it, the three sections I'm gonna have in this presentation is gonna cover a little bit about the company, how we're using React Native to build our main application, and some key learnings we had from this process. So what is Network? Um, we're an online marketplace where businesses build communities around the products that they're selling. And the main categories we're focusing on right now are sneakers, fashion, designer toys, art, music, and trading cards. So through this app, we're letting sellers uh, use the tools that we've built to grow their brands. And we, we have a combination of e-commerce tools, live streaming tools, and kind of social media functions all embedded in this application. Um, we're also a native mobile first business. Um, so back in 2018, we launched a shopping-only Swift app. Then a year later, we pivoted to React Native to target both iOS and Android. Then over the past few years, we've been building out a whole feature set for businesses to set up and sell products live in the same app. So why React Native? Uh, you know, we started with Swift. Why did we pivot? Um, you know, we're a startup, we need to move really fast, so time to market was really key for us. There's only about four to eight devs who work on mobile at any given time, and our feature set and release cadence is identical for iOS and Android. Um, the other thing we wanted to do was leverage the existing experience we had and the ecosystem surrounding React Native. Um, you know, my background is in web development, so I was using TypeScript and React a lot, and it just felt like the right thing to use React Native. Um, yeah, so diving into it, live shopping React Native. This is the main screen of the app. So all these sellers have live streams where they're selling product. And uh, there's about six main features in this screen. So we've got in-app notifications of people following the seller, joining the show, buying product. We've got a chat going live. We've got an auction if the seller set that up where buyers can go and bid on the product that they're streaming on. We've obviously got the video playing in the background where the seller is reacting to everything that's going on in the show. Um, we've got emoji reactions, and then we've got a catalog where users are able to kind of browse the seller's items and purchase things in the background. Um, under the hood, these are kind of the main packages we're using to power these different um, parts of, of the screen. So starting from the top left, we're using Pusher, which is um, third-party WebSocket hosted provider uh, to handle all of the inbound uh, messages to the client. Then we're using another third-party called Stream to do all of our chat stuff. Um, and then the video layer in the background is powered by Agora, and they're handling all of the uh, ultra-low latency broadcasts for the stream. Then everything else is kind of internal stuff. The emoji reactions is uh, kind of a homegrown WebSocket server that we have with a raw WebSocket connection in the front end. And then everything else is just GraphQL queries. Um, and then we actually use Pusher to do client-side cache mutations. So with that bid that's coming in, that's actually Pusher sending messages and uh, modifying the cache payload from the GraphQL query. So doing a little deeper dive on a feature that we launched maybe two or three weeks ago, uh, we're calling it the product catalog. I wanna go a little bit deeper into um, the packages we're using and some of the nuances we have to deal with with routing. Um, so these are the four packages we're using to power this sheet that appears in the video. Um, so we're using React Navigation. That was a decision made years ago and we've just kind of stuck with it. Um, and then we recently picked up a package called Bottom Sheet to handle this sheet that appears and uh, renders all the content. Um, then we're using another package called tab view to power the tab list view that you'll see in the video shortly. Um, it's the buy now and auction list views right there, yep. And then we're using a state management library called Jotai. It's kind of a replacement for Redux. Um, that's been working out pretty well for us too. Um, diving in a little bit deeper, I mean, it was kind of uh, an experiment to see if we could lace all these packages together. So. Starting from like the app route down, you know, we were using React Navigation and all their concepts. So we've got a navigation container, an app stack, a bunch of screens, and then nested within one of the screens that's rendered, this one being called the show, is the catalog. So within that, it's basically just using this package called Bottom Sheet. Uh, the cool thing about this library is that you can nest more screens inside this sheet, but the one little nuance is that you have to uh, embed a navigation container and make that independent. 
and that has some implications with how you do routing. Um, so everything works great. We're able to use all these packages, but two of the problems that we ran into was how do we deep link into a screen nested in the bottom sheet, and how do we route back out of one of those nested screens? So here's kind of an example of uh, a deep link that we're doing. So you'll see in the video we're clicking, we get routed into the show screen, and then we render the catalog, and then link directly into one of the detail screens in there. So the trick that we had to come up with is basically capturing the parameters of the show screen, saving that in some state, and then basically rendering the catalog, making it animate up, and then taking those params in a you know, component deeply nested inside the screen and routing to the proper detail screen within that. Um, the other problem we ran into was routing back out. So kind of littered throughout the application, we've got a bunch of um, you know, product detail screens. So one of them is embedded in the sheet. Some of them are in different parts of the like, navigation stack. So one thing we had to do with some of the CTAs we've built is create a wrapped navigate call. Um, you see that kind of with the buy now button in the lower half of the screen. So we made a custom hook called use nested navigation and then something called use set nested navigation. And basically under the hood, what this stuff does is captures the parent scopes navigate call and then captures a reference to uh, the sheet, dismisses it, and then calls navigate to take you to the right screen kind of in that parent navigation container. Um, and so here's kind of a video of the buy now button appearing in a different screen of the app um, where it's routing to the same kind of secure checkout screen. So down there, you, you see how we're kind of using this wrap navigate call. So if the wrap navigate call is defined, then we invoke that. Otherwise, we're just using the current scopes navigate call. Uh, so some key takeaways from building this app. Um, you always want to monitor performance. So keep your FPS monitor on. Um, you'll find some pretty crazy stuff. Like in this video example, um, the app is not getting used. There's no chats coming in. The only thing happening is the video in the background. Um, and you know, it's, it's dipping up and down between 58 and 55 FPS for seemingly no reason. So with Flipper, we were able to record the re-renders and see exactly which part of the tree was causing this issue. So it turns out that we had a context provider that had a state variable that was listening to whenever the video got updated. And so this one state variable was causing this three to five JS FPS dip. And it was just a feature that we built months ago and nobody really paid attention. As soon as we fixed that, removed that state variable, we went directly back up to 60 FPS. So that was a pretty crazy find and I'm sure there's a lot more in the app that's like that. Um, and yeah, just to close things off, the ecosystem is really comprehensive and rapidly evolves. I mean, you saw how complicated that show screen was. Um, and you know, there's a package out there that kind of addressed every one of our core needs. Um, the really interesting thing is we've almost never had to go outside the JavaScript code base. Um, you know, we're almost never writing any Swift or Java code. Uh, the other interesting bit is how good the libraries work with one another. So, You've got reanimated, gesture handler, React navigation, tab view, bottom sheet. You're able to put all these things together and get a really nice user experience. Um, and the other key thing to pay attention to is package upgrades. Um, you really need to keep up with the pace of open source development in this community. Um, you know, keep up with every React native release, you know, keep up with all of your main packages. Like React navigation went through a lot of changes from like V3 to V5. That was a big difference, and you know they keep on releasing more and more new stuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been a significant improvement in the native look and feel of the app since 059 when we released this. And uh, yeah, that's it for my lightning talk. That's a QR code to the app, so if you guys wanna try it out and play around with it, feel free. And uh, yeah, hope you guys learned something today.